And I think that it is so special because she involves emotional components, you know, supplements, like everything about the personality. And that's, we do know that personalities and emotions and body, mind, and spirit drive how healthy we're going to be or not. That's right. right? Yes, absolutely. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, Alyssa. It's fantastic to be here. Finally. You may not know oh. this, but I came across you seven or eight years ago when I was visiting LA from New York and you were doing a detox with Cafe Gratitude. And I was like, who is this woman? <laughs> She's amazing. Really? Yes, I really. did not know that. <laughs> no, you wouldn't have, you just right? made my day. Yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Maybe my month. <laughs> and so then, I, so I've been interested in you yeah. for that length of time. Like wow. really, really fascinated with your work and how you've been putting it out there, putting out healthy eating for, like, uh, for as far as I'm aware, at least a decade. Yeah, it's eight? almost like yeah. eight years. Yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, I know. It's like this business is so fun when you, I mean, when you find your passion and your purpose. Yes. And you get to help people like you do. Yeah. Um, and you've been doing it for, how long have you been doing it? I've been in practice for 12 years. Okay. I started studying nutrition and functional medicine and psychology in 2003. Was there a reason? <laughs> the, actually, there wasn't a conscious reason. Yeah, okay. Right? So, it just was so an interest of yours. I, yes, it was an interest of mine. I was previously in finance and I took nine well, months off to travel the world and like trying to find out what do I want to do? Mm -hmm. and, and was going to go back to school to become a dermatolog dermatologist. And then after thinking that's nine more years of study. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it. But right. what am I interested in? And I, it was nutrition. Mm -hmm. And I, at that time, I was particularly fascinated with how food could influence the skin because I was struggling with my own skin. Then once I got into nutrition, I was like, that's really boring. It's so easy <laughs> to fix that, right? right? It truly is, right. you know, it, it was too easy for you. Diet. It was too easy. Yeah. And so then I became more interested in how food influenced the mind. Mm -hmm. and the brain partially because where I studied it was started by a psychologist so there was okay. a huge influence of the mind coming in and I was always interested in weight because for me I was cha challenged with that in my mind okay so not there was really always the like same. 10 pounds that I was playing with and that sounds common with very very and mm -hmm. at that time you know, there weren't blogs, right? Which was now True. there's even more noise. And even then it was books, right? It was just books. And I was like, I'm totally confused about what it is that I need to do. Mm -hmm. And when I went to nutrition, into nutrition, I was like, oh, it's gonna be easy. Like I read everything. I was in for the biggest shock. Really? Because I was like, holy hell, I knew, know everything about everybody's cell job, but I knew nothing about the body. I knew nothing about how the, body the biochemistry. Works. Right. And so then I was like, whoa, like, wow. But once I understood that, mm -hmm. I no longer needed to read anybody's Book. food plan mm -hmm. because it was like, oh, this is how the body works. And so that obsessiveness with food went away. Wow. I just totally went away. And I, I know what it's like to obsess over food mm -hmm. where it's in the back of your mind. 80% of the time you're thinking about, should you eat this? Should you not eat this? What if you don't exercise? Like it's a horrible place to be. Yes. Right. And when you escape from that, there's so much freedom. Right? There's so much freedom to do what really brings you joy. Okay. Adele, man. <laughs> I mean, that's what every woman out there is looking for. Yes. Like most as well as right? right? right. looking good, exactly. right? And having freedom right. in the mind. Uh, yeah. Maybe right. they don't know about the freedom yet, but yes. And you can have both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you, can, you can have both. <laughs> so this book that you've just come mm -hmm. out with, um, I just was asking you earlier, it took you how long to from formulated? inception to, to publication date five years okay wow <laughs> <laughs> so so well, well, it was worth it yes i love it when people say to me oh my goodness i couldn't sleep last night i had mm -hmm. to stay up and read the entire thing it is so well written mm -hmm. it's like it, i feel like it's a fiction book and it's a novel to me that makes me so happy because this book went through so many iterations so many edits because it's complicated it, because it is. you've got the psychology you've got food you've got functional medicine all weaved into one and you can make it a really boring book mm -hmm. by uh, giving you the education behind it or you can make it an exciting book right. and and I wanted it to be a book that people wanted to go back to all the time because 
over the last five, six, seven, probably even 20 years, I've purchased various books and I flip through it and within 15 minutes I'm done. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want that book, yeah. right? I yeah. wanted it to want to really it. be, yeah, I yeah. wanted people to go back and reference it all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there is so much content in this. It's not like a one message, right? No. right? No. There's, there's a lot to it because, you, and it is focused on weight loss, but it's much deeper than that. It is about the psychology of self and who you are. Right. That is not a one message. No. A, it's, no. It's, it's just not. And so it's so layered that that's what weight loss is about. A, Has anyone done anything like this? No, that I'm aware of. Yeah, same. A, that's, that's why yeah. it feels so revolutionary. And to be able to, I know when I see clients, and I know you've seen clients for years, that all of those components mm -hmm. are weaved in at like when yes. you sit on the couch or the chairs with them and, you know, the emotional component and just, you know, history of trauma or yes. what their mind, their mental state of being is. So and look, research is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Like research is guidance. It gives us information. Yeah. But we need to elevate clinical practice and experience because that's real life. Right. A study is very siloed. Mm -hmm. And so you want to be able to take the research, but also combine it with a practical application because you've got somebody sitting in front of you who knows exactly what it is that they need to eat and they can't do it. Right. Right? So then you get into the psychology. Right. So the reason I created the archetype diet was for that purpose because there are just women who felt poorly about themselves it's like why can't i do this mm -hmm. they're shaming themselves they're scared that their body that they're never going to lose the weight or right. get rid of their anxiety or depression or digestive issues or whatever whatever it is and it's like no there's something deeper than that there's the psychology behind why you're doing what you're doing and we need to look into that right and when i started to really delve deeply into it that's when i realized that the source of our self-sabotaging behaviors mm -hmm. came to do with our self-worth so that was That's at the, the main core of it. focus yeah yes it's mm -hmm. like your childhood imprints mm -hmm. that say that you are valuable because of something <laughs> yeah right lead to your behaviors including your food behaviors then the food that you put into your mouth changes the hormones in the body we right. you know that that mm -hmm. then changes your body shape and other biochemical reactions in the body and so you can change the food yeah. But unless you look all the way back here as to these beliefs, there's going to be this constant tug of war until you break this erroneous and false belief that you are worthy because of something other than your own presence. Right. And we all have it. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. It's, we've, we have <laughs> had admit, some experience yep. and there's the societal imprints. Mm hmm. Right? Wow. We all take it in. We swallow it and we Absolutely. believe it. And this book is about breaking that. And nowadays worse than ever. I mean, that's why yeah. this is so important because we, ha we have to dive into that root cause yes. of why we're choosing the things we're doing to eat or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever we do to ourselves that isn't healthy. Or relationships, yeah, relationships. Or, or how you interact with your partner or yeah. your girlfriends or your mother. Like once you understand that, once you understand, say, their archetype, yeah. you know how to not trigger someone. Can you talk, you have to talk about yeah. these archetypes because they're fascinating. When I did my quiz, I felt like my answers were all over the map, you oh, know? Really? Yeah. And I was mm -hmm. like, cause I sort of, I have this thinking where if I answer it a certain way, it's going to come out a certain archetype. I think, yes. you know, I already am thinking, but I just was like, okay, I'll just answer whatever comes first to mind. Right. And when you, when I got up, when I got the results, how do you, how does this, how does this work? Because. <laughs> it's mind-boggling. So I'll go through the four archetypes. Yeah. Um, and then we can talk about the quiz. Yeah. So like your archetype is the ethereal. Mm -hmm. And the ethereal is very intuitive, spiritual, free-spirited, very sort of whimsical. Right. So okay. it has your body type. That is the typical <laughs> ethereal. Um, Even though I don't live like that as much as I'd like, but... But that's the grounded, that's, the, that's what you want. So yeah, that's the exactly. balanced version of the ethereal. So mm -hmm. when you said to me, you're the ethereal, I was like, oh, wow, you're a balanced version of it. Because I feel you have quite a bit of Wonder Woman in you. Mm -hmm. but that's how you keep the ethereal grounded. 
-hmm. And so the only reason I want people to identify their archetype is to understand the negative parts of their personality. It's not to applaud you for being this way. Yeah. Because the negative parts of uh, this a shadow side, it's where our blind spots are, it's where our self-sabotaging behavior comes in. So I only want you to identify it for that purpose. Yeah. So like with the ethereal, yeah. the typical physical symptoms will be that they suffer from IBS, they're typically constipated, they're bloated, they have anxiety, they often have hormonal issues because they tend to be low in estrogen, they'll mm -hmm. have dry skin. <laughs> Weight is not really an issue for them. Right. Okay? That's not, unless mm -hmm. they are eating lots of uh, like junky carbohydrates yeah. because they, they're very sensitive to the, their environment and other people's emotions. Oh. And if they cannot discern what's theirs and what's somebody else's, they can end up numbing themselves with these carbs to feel grounded and to, to numb out what's going on. That's when they start to gain the weight. And the only reason why I don't have a weight issue, because that is so me, I mean, all of that. And I love carbs and I love numbing myself with all of the carbs. <laughs> But because of what I do for a living, yes. you know, that's what keeps me lucky. But if I didn't do this for a living, you're conscious I, of it. You know I exactly what it is that you mm -hmm. need to eat. And so with the ethereal archetype, it, the, the diet piece for her is she needs those carbs. Mm -hmm. like you are the one archetype where you need the legumes and ah, okay. the, the, the brown rice and the quinoa. And like going on the paleo diet is a disaster for mm -hmm. you because what happens is it keeps you airy and spacey, yeah. right? You need these things to ground you. So you are the archetype that my, my other archetypes, in particular the nurture, wish they could be. Okay. All right? They wish okay. they could be you. Mm -hmm. and, and so a vegan diet is actually an excellent uh, option for the ethereal. Okay. Because she can have more of those grains, she right. can tolerate those for the other archetypes, tends to go more to body fat. Oh, okay. Okay. So okay. there's that, that piece there. Hmm. Um, and, and with all of this, it's like, where are you on the spectrum? Yeah. So you can be very out of balance down here, and, and or you can be up here, like very balanced because you're conscious of your choices. You're mm -hmm. conscious of your behaviors. You're not solely relying on the, the ethereal's traits to guide your behaviors. Right. You've pulled in like the Wonder Woman, like for you being a wonderful businesswoman, you've pulled in those Wonder Woman traits mm -hmm. to, to really have you grounded and balanced. Mm -hmm. um, so then that, then we'll go to the strength yeah. of the nurturer. So yeah, the ethereal nurture. here, the nurturer is here, and we've yeah. got the other two in the middle okay. here. Okay. So the nurture here is she lives from the heart. Very kind and compassionate right. and caring. I love I love surrounding myself with nurturers. Know, <laughs> <laughs> and and the downside though is that because she sources her value from being there for others. Okay. So if that's the case, then she will tend to deprioritize herself mm -hmm. and put everybody else first. Right? So then her needs get less and less and less. And what happens is she becomes totally exhausted. She, she also finds it very difficult to accept help because part of it feels for her like she, this is her responsibility. Right. To help others. To help others. Because mm -hmm. she likes it. Like she yeah. gets a joy from she gets, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but then her it's self so out of balance. Yeah. The self fulfillment, the self worth. Then it's so out of balance that she can end up finding herself in the state of adrenal fatigue and adrenal exhaustion. She, so her dominant hormone is insulin. Mm -hmm. So, and insulin makes you store body fat everywhere. Right. It has no preference, it's sort of right. everywhere. So if you identify with that body type, you, there's some nurturing aspect mm -hmm. within you. That could be in a little bit to the excess. And part of the reason that the insulin is elevated with her is that she's a comfort eater and sometimes a secret eater. Okay. And the reason that she tends to comfort eat, even if she doesn't want to admit that, right. Right. Um, is just that no one's giving her the nurturing. Right. Partially because she's, she's not, just not it. letting it in. Yeah. And then, and then she is the one that is not going to make the smoothie for herself in the morning because mm -hmm. she, even though she knows that's what she should be doing, yeah. a plant-based smoothie with all yeah. of the phytonutrients coming in from the berries, mm -hmm. because it's chaos in her, at her house in the morning. Right? There's too many things going on. She's looking after this, this, and this, and this. Does and she the, create the chaos? As not well? necessarily, okay. but everything is is there's so much for her in yeah. her mind and rather than like taking time to just pause and put it down on paper mm -hmm. and thinking about how she could delegate you know right. what could she ask her husband or boyfriend or whoever else is helping out to do right she yeah. feels like she needs to take that on so then she's out the door of no food in her stomach and then that gluten-free muffin looks really good to her so she's going to grab one on the way to work because she knows if she doesn't then she's going to be super hungry right because out of all the archetypes she is the hungriest 
because of her biochemistry. Okay. Because her mm. insulin is dysregulated. Right. Um, and that starts to change the appetite hormones. Mm -hmm. She is the hungriest and it doesn't feel fair to her. So never feels full. Never feels full. And satisfied. Yes. Yeah. And and she's the one that is definitely looking at you mm -hmm. and thinking, it's not fair. Right. Like you can go and eat the gluten free muffin yeah. and you can You're have the macro bowl. Why can't I, yeah. right? That's not fair. Because the biochemistry is different. Got it. Right? That's what that's about. Okay. And then over time too, if she continues to eat that way and the insulin's elevated, what happens, yeah. and you'll probably be familiar with this, is that it increases your estrogen levels. Yeah. Right? So then she's got a whole lot more estrogen floating around the body. Mm -hmm. And and the most innocuous place to identify that is identifying the hips, the, hips, yeah. the body fat on the hips. Mm -hmm. Like body fat isn't bad, yeah. right? It's right. You might not like no, it, right. but it's, if you you want to look at that because if you don't and the estrogen is dysregulated well then it's setting you up for fibroids and endometriosis and breast cancer oh, wow. so mm -hmm. so that's the pattern there mm -hmm. with the nurturer okay. we also know the energetics so if we look at the people woman with breast cancer tends to be the caregivers interesting okay? yeah. and that's the nurturer wow. uh -huh. like constantly care 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 right. and right? Giving, there's, a giving, bio, giving. there's a biochemical reason for that mm -hmm. and the book explains all of that why yeah. that's the case uh -huh. <laughs> so, so the nurturers when they read this book they're like Oh, oh my, my God. God, right? You have put these pieces together in a way that I've never seen done before. I, and they really feel heard because, you know, they're often being, they're often told to go on the paleo diet. Yeah, because absolutely. Because that, that is a way to lower the, the insulin levels. Mm -hmm. But the paleo That's not diet right. is... It's not that it's not right, because I would say my plan falls under the paleo diet for them. Mm -hmm. But when we think of paleo, we think red meat and nuts. Oh, yeah. Right? Which yeah. is the worst thing for the nurturer, mm -hmm. because it's too chemically and energetically heavy for her. Okay. So if you think about it, it's a cow, right? Uh -huh. And a cow is stuck, uh -huh. and she already feels stuck. stuck. <laughs> and then you've got nuts, and you've got paleo treats, and it's like, ugh, stuck again. It's all heavy. It's, he it's all heavy, which is already how she feels. So right. it's like, you have to flip it. Right? So if you want to feel lighter, go and match the energetics. Let's go with more of a pescatarian plan. Swap the nuts to seeds. Yeah. Right? And I can go into that, but it is in the book as to right. wh why, from this nutrition perspective, the seeds are better for you than, than the nuts. nuts. You know, there's, there's more omega-3s that. and slightly more omega-6s in it versus the saturated fat in there, and that hmm. changes the hormonal balance. And okay. I don't go into it in too much detail, but it's like, I don't want to... And I, I didn't know that part. Of yeah. the nuts either, yeah. but it's just like a preference, like mm -hmm. a preference to go towards the seeds. Right. Um, but I also know the nurturers and the Wonder Woman and the Femme Fatale. And guess what? That jar of almond butter can drop to this mm -hmm. in one sitting. <laughs> Oops. Right, 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 right. The whole jar <laughs> too. Yeah. Some jar. I know. Half the jar is gone. <laughs> so, so yeah. you as the ethereal can actually handle yeah. it, right? Mm -hmm. So nuts for the ethereal are great because it's a good way to ground you. Right. Okay. Right. And right. and I actually like red meat for the ethereal, but the yeah. ethereal has the most amount of variety with her body. She can have more red meat, and she can certainly follow a vegan plan because she can okay. have all those grains and those legumes. Then we have the Wonder Woman. Yes. The Wonder Woman is my archetype, and so I'm very intimate with her. <laughs> I can't wait to hear about her. <laughs> and she's really a product of the post-feminist movement. Hmm. And like I am that first generation that's coming out of the 1960s, early 1970s, yeah. post that feminist movement there, which was you can be anything that you want, so be everything. Whoa, <laughs> yes, that's a lot of pressure on yourself, yes. right? So it's like, be really successful. Yeah. Like be the CEO because right. our, our mothers couldn't be that. Yeah. And so it's be the best. You have yeah. to be the straight A student. Look pretty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> be kind. Mm -hmm. Just do it all, right? And particularly today. Like I look at girls today oh. and I, I, my core practice is in New York, although I am here in LA. Right. You see a lot of that coming down to these teenage girls who are on five and a half hours sleep yeah. and are totally stressed out. Like their adrenals are just starting to drop off at 16 because they're doing drama class, they're doing tennis, they're on the soccer team, yeah. they've got all these expectations for them at school and it's like way too much for them to be able to handle. And it's the Wonder Woman feeling that, that, that she needs to do everything and be the best at it. And so she's different to the nurturer because where she sources her sense of self-worth from is success and achievement. That's what it's all right. about. 
And, and she also lets go of herself as well. She she, she she will try to look after herself. Okay. The work will always take precedence. Okay. Will always. Mm -hmm. so, so she, she comes second. Yes. She, but she won't necessarily look at that because work is still part of her. Okay. All right. And she, yeah. she gets that reward. Like I will tell yeah. you, if she's got business meetings upon business meetings, the gym is going to take a backseat. Mm -hmm. right? It just mm -hmm. is. Same with meditation. It's right. like, how can I meditate? My, my, like, I'm too anxious right. up here. And I would say, you're too, too much anxious going on. and there's too many excited to neurotransmitters happening. You do breath. Yeah. Right? Breath is really powerful at expelling those excitatory or down regulating those excitatory neurotransmitters. Yeah. yeah. And so with the Wonder Woman there, the dominant hormone would be what? Do you have any idea what that might be? What well again, isn't it cortisol as cortisol. well? Cortisol. Yeah, yeah it's cortisol. Adrenaline, cortisol. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's cortisol. Exactly. So, adrenaline and neuroadrenaline. Yeah. And so we still when cortisol is elevated, you tend yeah. to store it on the stomach. body. Yeah. yeah, on the stomach yeah. here. And like you said, for you, you're a pretty balanced ethereal because you're conscious of these things. Yeah. And so I'm a pretty balanced Wonder Woman because I'm sure. conscious of these things. Mm -hmm. So like I I meditate almost daily. I eat in a way that's clean. I don't mm -hmm. skip meals. I connect with people. Right. Like I have really wonderful intimate relationships. And these are a balance to the cortisol. Yeah. So like fortunately for me, like I'm lucky. Like now my stomach yeah. is flat because I put those things in place. Nice. Because I'm aware of them, I know that I've got the tools yeah. in place. Right. Um, uh, um, and I, that's what this book is about, giving you those tools, tools to know that you can adjust this. Well, we don't have time to do the femme fatale, oh, we but we're gonna, yeah, I'm going to have to have you back yes. and finish up or maybe do an IGTV and we'll like talk about the different body types too. So, And I would say for people, if they yeah. want to know the archetype, there's yeah. a test online, yes. which is the one that, that, that you I did. took. Uh -huh. And it's under my author website, like danajames.com, and you take the test there and you can figure it out. Yeah. And it's, Thank you. Oh, it's a must. <laughs> it really is. So if you had to sum up your mission yes. today in one word. Um, what would it be? Helping a woman have insight into themselves. <sighs> Beautiful. Like really to understand their behaviors and their triggers. Like the root of, the root like of why. It. Yeah, I know. The more conscious you are, uh -huh. the more peaceful you become and the yeah. more peaceful you actually make the world when you're not triggered by things. That's oh, yeah. beautiful. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> glad you. to have you. <laughs> Thank you. I feel so lucky. <laughs> Thank you. Okay.